wondering which is the best small size SUV in the premium segment. It's good to find out today the fight is between three Mercedes Audi and BMW SUVs but first let's start with Mercedes. The Mercedes GLA offers strong compact SUV credentials, with extra interior space, improved practicality and high levels of comfort and refinement. Mercedes has refined the GLA in all the right places. It's more practical, offers advanced driver assistance tech and is a comfortable place in which to travel. When you add in a strong range of petrol, diesel and plug-in hybrid powertrains, along with the improved quality of materials throughout the cabin, the GLA has noticeably come of age. Despite these obvious plus points, the downside is that the GLA is pricey compared to the competition and, if you make the decision to purchase, the running costs are also a little steep. However, it remains a genuine contender for families seeking a small, premium SUV. About the Mercedes GLA The Mercedes GLA SUV was launched in 2014 to a rather modest fanfare. Although it was a supposed premium product, designed to take on the likes of the BMW X1, Volvo XC40 and Audi Q3, it fell short in a number of key areas. The interior was a little cramped, the ride wasn't particularly comfortable and the bland styling didn't inspire a sense of desirability. It was telling that the original GLA design was often referred to as just an a class on stilts, which points directly to the perception of it as more of a high-riding hatch than a well-rounded compact SUV. Mercedes has clearly decided to challenge that perception with the second-generation GLA. It's a full 11 centimeters taller than the previous Model N, with the wheelbase extended by 30 millimeters, the manufacturer claims there's now more interior space. There's also a bigger boot which means the GLA can compete on a practical level with rivals such as the Mazda CX-3, Lexus UX and even the Range Rover Evoque. Performance is well taken care of with a range of petrol, diesel and plug-in hybrid engine options. The GLA 180 and 200 versions are powered by a 1.3-liter petrol unit, although with different outputs of 134 bhp and 161 bhp, respectively. The GLA 250 variant boasts a more potent 221 bhp from its 2.0-liter petrol engine. All cars use an 8-speed automatic transmission, with the exception of the GLA 200 which has a 7-speed auto, box. Those completing higher mileages might want to opt for the diesel GLA 200D with 148 bhp, or the GLA 250D which produces 187 bhp. The 200D is available with Mercedes 4 Modich 4 wheel drive system while the 250D gets it as standard. The most efficient GLA is the 250E plug-in hybrid which combines 1.3-liter petrol power with an electric motor to deliver a total output of 215 bhp. Mercedes hasn't forgotten those who desire plenty of pace to go with the SUV practicality, however. At the top of the GLA range sits the extreme Mercedes-AMG GLA 35 with 302 bhp and above that sits the 415 bhp GLA 45s, both using a 2.0-liter petrol powerplant and turning in some serious performance figures. In addition to the broad new engine range, the exterior design offers a sharper, more focused look, with Mercedes including nine individual trim levels for customers to choose from. Starting with the entry-level sport models the range moves through to the bolder-looking AMG line premium plus cars, while the plug-in hybrid versions are only offered with exclusive trim levels. The Mercedes-AMG variants boast further luxury kit and specific trim and tech enhancements. Second on our list as Audi Q3 our attempt to fight Mercedes stands out but a cool look the exterior has been completely redesigned, from the octagonal single frame grille disturbed by eight metal stripes, to the narrow headlights, to the muscular profile, everything is new. Only the back can be immediately recognized as belonging to a Q3, but it is now more aggressive. 
Speaking of headlights, Audi mentions that all versions will be equipped with full LED, but out of three variants, two will be optional. If there is no Q3 with halogens, take off your hat. Remains to be seen. Customers will have many customization options, from the S-Line package, to 11 shades for the exterior, to contrasting colors for the plastic protection elements, to three levels of equipment. The volume of the trunk has increased from 460 to 530 liters, but it can increase to 675 liters if you move the folding seat 40 hours 20 minutes and 40 seconds 150 millimeters further forward, or to 1525 liters if it folds completely. Enough for a family with two children. The cockpit resembles that of the new A1 and is rotated 10 degrees towards the driver. The seats can be made of leather or artificial leather and Alcantara. Moreover, you can now opt for Alcantara in three colors for interior finishes. Speaking of colors, the new ambient light allows you to choose one of no less than 30 options. It will be very difficult to decide between dark green and spruce green. Also inside we can see that Audi has given up the rotary control for headlights, its place being taken by some buttons. We could talk about the technology on board the new Audi Q3 for days, but we will limit ourselves to the digital instrument panel with 10.25 inch screen, optional one of 12.3, and the MMI radio infotainment system plus with 8.8, .8, touchscreen, optional MMI navigation plus with 10.1, touchscreen. The latter can receive Audi Connect navigation and infotainment plus which includes Google Earth services, with high-resolution images of European cities, digital radio, voice commands and many other inventions designed by the Germans. Two USB ports, one USB Type-C, on the front, two on the back and a 12-volt socket are available inside the new Q3, and if you want to connect your mobile phone, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto can be specified. And as music is a great passion of many drivers, Audi offers the Bang & Olufsen premium sound system with 15 speakers, 3D sound and a total power of 680W. What else could you want? As for the engines, they will be 4 in number at the start of sales. 2.0 TDI 150 horsepower A6 speed manual transmission will be offered as standard, but AS Tronic with dual clutch and 7 can be checked from the list of options, as well as Quattro all-wheel drive. The Audi Drive Select Dynamic Handling System with 6 driving modes will also be offered as an option, changing the parameters of the steering, suspension, engine and transmission according to the driver's preferences. If you opt for the sports suspension, standard for S-Line, it further increases the agility of the SUV in Ingolstadt. Personally, I would go for the 17, standard wheels, but I know that many customers will choose the 18, 19 or even 20, Audi Sport wheels. This is the new BMW X1 and as we expected, this time the car has front wheel drive as standard and the X drive all wheel drive system will be optional. The second generation of the X1 will thus provide more space inside and for the trunk because it is built on the new technical platform with front wheel drive and transversely located engine. The new BMW technical solution for its compact cars has already been launched on the 2 Series Active Tourer which we have already driven in Romania. Following the change of platform, the X1 has seats above for passengers. The driver is 3.6 cm higher and the passengers in the seat have a sitting position 6.4 cm higher than in the case of the first X1. The trunk is 85 liters larger, it is able to receive a luggage volume of 505 liters as standard. In addition to all the technology already available on the brand's compact models, the new X1 becomes the first compact segment model to optionally offer Traffic Jam Assistant, a system that keeps the car in the middle of the lane in congested traffic without the driver pedaling or steering. However, for the system to remain operational, the driver must keep at least one hand on the steering wheel. 
The BMW X1 can be ordered with one of two petrol and three diesel engines. They benefit from either six-speed manual gearboxes or Steptronic eight-speed automatic. List of engines with some technical data. If you like numbers, S-Drive 20i, front wheel drive, 192 horsepower, 280 newton meters, 0 to 100 kilometers per hour 7.7, .7, 225 kilometers per hour, average consumption 5.9. X-Drive 20i, all wheel drive, 192 horsepower, 280 newton meters, 0 to 100 kilometers 7.4, 223 kilometers per hour, average consumption 6.3. X-Drive 25i, all-wheel drive, 231 horsepower, 350 newton meters, 0 to 100 kilometers per hour 6.5, 235 kilometers per hour, average consumption 6.4. S-Drive 18d, front-wheel drive, 150 horsepower, 330 newton meters, 0 to 100 kilometers per hour 9.2, 205 kilometers per hour, Average consumption 4.1. X-Drive 20D. All-wheel drive, 190 horsepower, 400 newton meters, 0 to 100 kilometers per hour 7.6, 219 kilometers per hour, average consumption 4.9. X-Drive 25D. All-wheel drive, 231 horsepower, 450 newton meters, 0 to 100 kilometers per hour 6.6, 235 kilometers per hour, average consumption 5.0. Returning to the technical part, driving experience control with its Eco Pro, Comfort, Sport and Sport Plus modes will be offered as standard on 30i, 40i and 30d engines. Regarding the suspensions, what do you understand from this? Continues to rely on its winning formula of a double joint spring strut axle at the front and a five link rear axle. I'm telling you, nothing has changed but let's not panic because BMW announces that, X1 will be sportier than ever without compromising on comfort. Okay, it remains to be seen. I mean, to test.